Hello, my name is Jean the uh, Sewing Machine. That's my screen name for the Missouri Star Quilt Company's um, online community forum. Uh, today I would like to show a process for making a very simple, easy serger quilt. This quilt is fully reversible and you can use scrap fabrics and you can use scrap batting to make it. It makes about a 45, 40 to 45 inch square quilt. And as you can see, this is very colorful and takes probably about one to two hours to make it. To make the serger quilt, or the uh, quilt as you go quilt, that's one uh, wonderful thing about this is that you don't uh, have to do any quilting once you're finished with it. You will need 16 six inch strips of fabric. Um, I cut these out uh, using a little boy fabric that's based on the theme of transportation. Um, I've got a mixture of different fabrics that I'm going to be using for this quilt, but um, the easiest way to do it is to uh, use two fabrics, use a print and a coordinating solid, and cut eight strips of each color. Uh, that way you don't get confused as to which one you should use next. You just, re you just uh, use the solid on one side and you use the print on the other side um, for each row that you make. Um, the other thing that you're going to need is you're going to need batting. Well, I have found that when I do my quilts and I make my quilts, I always have probably a strip about this wide left on either side and on the ends of my quilts that I cut off and I don't really know what to do with it. So finding a use for that other than making um, a lot of pillows, because I have lots of this stuff, works out great because I can cut my six inch strips of batting using those edges that I have no uh, real purpose for at this point in time. So my serger quilt is really something that um, is one of those uh, wonderful projects where you can use scraps, use them up, and you're using them for a good cause. If you want to purchase yardage for making these quilts, you'll need about a yard and two-thirds of two colors, um, so a total of about three yards for, uh, three to three and a half yards for the entire quilt. The size ends up being about 45 by 40 um, when you are finished. One bag of about five that I have uh, collected already for my batting. Um, I like to use a low loft polyester batting for this. Uh, it's puffy enough and yet it's not too hard to uh, sew into the layers of the searcher quilt. Uh, these are typically the sides that I have left over after I'm finished making um, a big quilt. And uh, this batting, if I get it on sale, is very inexpensive. So um, I don't have a lot of money involved in it. I'm going to show you how to uh, do this serger type quilt. Uh, using both the sewing machine and the serger. So for my first row I'm going to start with the sewing machine. So I'm going to start out, I chose two different fabrics, one for the front and one for the back, and I made a little quilt sandwich. I have my batting in between and I have um, my two fabrics so that the right sides are to the outside. And right now I'm just going to sew down uh, this one side, catching the batting in my seam and I want to sew this seam allowance as close to a quarter of an inch or a scant quarter of an inch as I can get. Oh, I'm going to start it. Now you sew uh, on the outside uh, with raw edges just showing it doesn't matter because when you sew your next row you're going to cover up this stitching with um, uh, by sewing the next row of fabrics over the top of the seam. That's why it's good to sew a scant quarter of an inch on this one, as scant as you can, because the next seam we're going to sew um, about a three-eighths inch seam. 
And so we're getting down here. One thing that'll happen is you will be, when you get to the other end, not all of these fabrics are exactly the same width and it doesn't really matter um, because you will trim it off when you're all finished making the quilt. You'll have a variety of different lengths. That's why uh, you probably won't end up with a perfect uh, 42 or 45 inch uh, length of your quilt because you're going to have to do some trimming later. I'm just leaving this end loose right now. I don't really need to do anything with that. Um, I can sew it close later on, but um, this is where this end is the end that I'm going to be adding the strips onto uh, to make my next row. And I can finish that end whenever. Um, one of the things that I found when I made um, my first one here is I got mixed up where my um, beginning end was and I kept sewing some here and some here. So if I leave that open and I don't sew it close, then I'll always remember that that's the end where I started and I won't make that mistake. I'm getting ready to sew my rows together. In the, in the uh, next segment that I show you, which um, I did the uh, second row together, I made a mistake in calling how I put this together. You put right sides to right sides of your fabric on both sides of the quilt. I said wrong side to wrong side, so that is incorrect. So when you get to that point, uh, just remember that I made a big mistake. I don't want you to do that. When you're finished sewing it, you want your right sides to be able to turn out and you want your seam to be uh, where your wrong sides are. Now, if you need to pin this, I would say go ahead and pin this. I'm not going to do it and I'm going to hope for the best. Now I need to lay my batting on there. Now, depending on your sewing machine and the feet that you use, you can either do this on this side or here. Um, I think it gets caught in the feed dogs if you do it at the bottom, so I'm going to do it at the top. And this particular machine has a closed toe foot, so that makes it great for sewing batting because the the uh, batting doesn't get caught uh, in the open part of the foot. So here's how I'm going to sew row two. And as I said, I'm going to go in a little bit. Um, instead of making it a quarter, quarter of an inch seam, I'm going to sew it about a three-eighths inch seam so that I'm sure that when I'm finished, I'm going to cover up the stitching of the farmer row. 